Phidias has infiltrated using social media, charisma, charm, and common sense, one of the most powerful bureaucratic institutions in the world, the European Parliament, and from inside has exposed, if not corruption, the peculiar way that it works. And of course, it's come to the attention of Elon Musk. It's pretty uh, important that his patronage has been offered to you. That's one of the things, I suppose, that means that you now have a strong power base and are going to continue to have quite a lot of impact, I imagine. Yes, it's crazy for me to see the most powerful person in the world to say Fidias is right, super important decision. It's, it's the coolest thing that could happen in my life. Yeah, it's really <laughs> mental. It's mental and it's exciting because... Like, it gives me a lot of leverage, a lot of power. It gives me a lot of opportunities. So, Elon, thank you for making this gift I can't believe how um, responsibly you're using that power, though, because this, if imagine if this was something that was being made by 60 Minutes in America or a serious Channel 4 documentary in the UK, this would be regarded as the kind of journalism that's required. But this is beyond journalism. This is journalism meets politics. It's very interesting because I can do journalism also from the inside and say the truth and also be a politician, uh, which is very interesting. I think I, I have a big response. Responsibility, huge responsibility. What I'm really struck by is that you are changing politics in a way that very deliberate activists are probably unable to. I'll just to tell you what I mean. Like the fact that you do polls online where you allow your constituents or your followers or supporters to determine what you do, for me, feels like a very pure expression of politics where people in elected positions are responding directly to a mandate, not responding to a centralised authority, but responding to the people they were elected to represent. Are you aware how, I see that on your shirt you have hashtag new politics, are you aware of how innovative what you are doing is? Uh, I'm not sure if I'm aware of it, um, mm. maybe, but uh, I want to start and say apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for my accent. It will be, it's a bit difficult for you to understand, but you are, we're going to get through this together. But yeah, in Cyprus, this is the biggest thing that happened in politics ever. Like since Cyprus is a democracy since 1960, this is the coolest thing that happened. And I got uh, more votes as an independent than all the parties. So uh, it, it's crazy. I don't believe it myself. Like I got 20% of the votes uh, and it, it's very weird. But how it happened, I, I wanted, like I heard Elon Musk saying, if you don't uh, see the change that you want around the world, become the change. I was like, fuck the politics in Cyprus. They are assholes. They're just caring about the, themselves and their party and power. So I want to become the change. And me, I believe that I will, I will not get elected because if you have a straight mind, you are going to understand that there is no chance. But, uh, so, but I did it anyway because it was important enough to do it. So I started slowly, slowly, and I didn't have any backing, any money, just the power of social media. And I was a successful YouTuber in the United States. I had two, two million, two and a half million subscribers, but I went back to Cyprus and I had basic, people knew me there, but I had not a lot of followers, not strong social media uh, there. But slowly, slowly, after five months of campaigning, my social media in Cyprus became stronger than the TV stations. So we kind of saw a bit of diff different politics and like it's the first time that this is happening, I think, in the world. Just one person to achieve to interrupt the whole political uh, system and change politics as we know it. I've been following you on YouTube and on X and I'm very excited to try and understand, is this an anomaly, something that just happens once or is this potentially... Uh, the new face of politics, f meaning that various independent candidates could rise up in districts everywhere and represent their constituents in the way that you are using technology to derive direct mandate on almost every issue. Uh, so I think, yes, because now social media gives power to the people. 
and we are going to probably see more independent uh, people running and actually getting elected and with more but uh, the system it doesn't work for independent people yet so for example in the parliament i'm independent one member out of the 720 and there is 33 other independent and we don't have a lot of power and we're discriminated so the system yet is not ready to for a lot of power for the independent people but i think slowly slowly as more and more will get elected i'll try i will try myself to give a little bit more space and more freedom and give more uh justice to the independent and get more rights let's say in the parliament but yeah yeah, i think this will be a kind of a future and you are talking more about direct democracy which is very interesting like you know i feel that i know kind of what people know, need and want from social media i put a video and i have hundreds uh, of comments thousands of comments and i get the sense of the people so this is kind of very important like you need to be the voice of the people this is kind of representative democracy so i think we are the ones that can't do this because the parties, I don't know, they don't have the mechanisms, they don't have, or maybe the parties can become cool, hopefully. So you are actually doing something that I think is fascinating for a politician, asking, what do you want? What do you want? And I think that that might be a really interesting way of conducting politics. One, because it will, because people do want different things and that leads to, decentralization. I've just come from the Bitcoin conference and it seems to me, and I don't know very much about Bitcoin, I know that you have spoken about it some, that what Bitcoin is, is by its nature, is transparent because of the way that you can observe the nature of the transactions and it is decentralized. There is no central institution or bank that is controlling the currency. And we're already seeing in media decentralization. You, a popular YouTuber, me, you have then taken the step that I think terrifies them of saying, I'm going to use the power I've got that is derived from the By audience. The way, they are fucking terrified in my country, the parties. Imagine a kid, 24 years, or they are like 50 years of organizations. They are like, and I got more votes in combined. Um, so they are like, they are confused. What What is the future? We need to adjust. We need to, we are afraid. So it's very interesting. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. No, it's good. We're here to listen to you. We're here to listen to you. Thank you for saying. But like, it just shows that new mandates, new movements can be formed. But not only that, it's not like you're sort of very pro this religious idea or pro that political idea all you're actually saying is i will be transparent like i loved your video where you said they give me 300 dollars a day expenses they give me this salary if you i get sixty thousand dollars ladies and gentlemen when you are a police a month but to uh, like the fifteen thousand is for yourself and the rest is for you to spend to have a team and all this stuff interesting fact you are coming from an opposite perspective and it makes me curious about is that is that deliberate the way you've derived arrived at this place of like i'll i'll do whatever you want do you want because i remember you did a poll on whether or not you would join the green party or remain independent you just ask your audience what do you want me to do this for me is so innovative and so and yet somehow so obvious but no one's done it before no one's gotten into a position to do it people love to participate in decision making some people think that i'm immature and i'm just giving the power i don't have an opinion but i think let's say when we have more i think independent in the future i think i trust more an independent uh, critical thinker than any party that will do his adjustment with his team he will say okay we need to vote about this thing this is the topics that we are interested so i trust more him than any other uh, and if I know his background and he, what he believes and all this stuff, but uh, I got managed to get elected in my country is very strange, ladies and gentlemen, without saying anything about my political positions. I was just saying about education, that it sucks. And people still uh, saw the authenticity and the, uh, that I'm honest about what I'm saying, and still uh, they voted for me. So uh, people maybe don't need what we think that uh, po- what politicians think uh, they want uh, for people for them to vote for them so i think that what people want to vote for you is changing as well slowly slowly i think politics is a black box it's like nobody knows how it's functioning and all this stuff and my goal is to make this reveal what is happening inside and i think just by doing and also nobody in europe feel european they don't understand how Europe works. It's very complicated. So 
if I live, I don't think that I have the most power, to be honest, as a member of the European Parliament to change the world. But I think doing this with social media and showing to the world what is happening and like how Europe works and what is this, open the black box for everyone. I think that will be my biggest contribution for the next five years. I like your, uh, yeah, it's an amazing contribution. I like your metaphor of the black box because I think that media is also a black box. People don't know what the relationships are between commercial commercial partners and political influencers. For example, when the Twitter files stories came out and we found how much the CIA and the FBI were inside social media sites and we all know that there have been operations for many years, certainly since the 60s, 50s, if you want to talk about McCarthyism or Operation Mockingbird or MK Ultra, where there is penetration of media organisations by the deep state to control information. So just by being revealing about media or being revealing about the European Parliament or being revealing about the judiciary, you're starting to expose people to new information. And I think what's important about that, because I recognize your humility, oh, I'm not the most intelligent person in the world, but I think a lot of people have become tired of being talked down to. I'm told you cannot participate in politics. And what you have shown is people actually do want to participate in politics. People do want to, to yes, a degree. They uh, want. And you know, I was getting the most views in my country for a six month period because people love politics in a cool way, not in a boring way. And I think all these videos that I'm making, they're getting millions of views, every single video that I'm making in the parliament. So people love this shit. They love to understand this and know politics, but not in a boring way. As Because when politicians talk, most of the times you don't understand what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, it's like maybe you understand because you are clever, but like uh, most of the normal people don't understand. It's information. It's not fun. It's boring. So you don't want to listen. Yeah. So you assume they are clever and they are doing their yeah. job, but. This is not the case. If they were clever, they're going to speak in a in a simple way. For this is how information is uh, is transmitted. So I, I I don't know. I think it's very interesting how the world will look in the future. What it makes me realize is the way that power hierarchies operate is open for debate and disruption. Why should we assume when we look at a political figure like Boris Johnson or? Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, that these people should have power, but you shouldn't have power. I shouldn't have power. Ordinary people watching this, participating in this with us, shouldn't have power. What you've demonstrated is if we are truly to create systems of government that are based on consensus and conversation, then you need a different skill sets. And the institutions and establishment uh, institutions that call themselves democracy now are about preservation of power, not the um, exercise of, of the electorate. They're not about this is what people seem to want. They're about how do we appease people, distract people, control people while engaging in a conversation, pretending they they are getting what they want. By the way, how the European Parliament works you are, is like 20 committees and you choose what committees to go in. You're about education, about uh, this, and it's like uh, you can choose two, three committees to be in. So you don't oh. need to be experts in everything, but you need to vote. Uh, for everything. So, so you need to kind of pay attention to what is happening in all the committees, but you need to contribute in two. So that, so I chose the stuff that I know kind of, I chose to, there is one petition. Uh, so kind of everyone in Europe can, um, can kind of apply their ideas for the parliament to uh, make them in reality. So I will use, uh, so, so we get a lot of re uh, requests and we see what we like and we, we, so I, I thought that being a YouTuber, having millions of views, I will promote this. So everyone in Europe will apply their ideas so, for us to do them in the parliament. So that's why I chose that one. So I chose something that I can contribute in and I'm sure I will contribute more than all the other MEPs because of my power of social media. Uh, the other thing that I chose to contribute is culture. So it's about education and culture and what is media, it's culture. And I'm, I'm very good at social media and all this stuff and also education. I hate education. 
educational system. I think uh, it kills creativity and it should be a lot more innovative ways to do it. So there, I chose some topics that I'm familiar with. I didn't know, of course, because I'd never sought to ask or inquire or learn that the way that the European Parliament works is that there are 20 committees and you can elect to be in two or three of them, but you vote across all of those committees. I wonder if during that time you have sensed a, a way that an agenda is being pushed. Yes. Because when you the said parties that, uh, are so fucking powerful. And uh, I don't like this because, uh, for example, uh, you know, the 720 uh, MEPs, uh, they are in parties. 33 of them, they are, not in, they are independent like me. So basically, the way that a system works is you are not following the 20 committees. You are only following your three committees and your party tells you what to vote on the other. So the parties have so much power. They are just whatever they want to do. And if one party, do an alliance, the big party, uh, do an social and Democrats with EPP, which is the two biggest parties, if they do an alliance together, they can do whatever they want in the parliament. So it's like uh, they are doing whatever they want. I cannot stop them, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hopefully in five years we become... <laughs> you are just one man. You are just one humble Cypriot man. I'm here saying what is happening. This is information from the inside. This is how it's operating. And hopefully we can understand it and slowly, slowly we can change it. Tell me how you did it. Tell me what you did in Cyprus to win this election. I understand that you spoke to other candidates and tell me that do you truly believe that if you could do it, other people could do it. Could I do it? Could I run for a political position in this country, like Mayor of London or for a Member of Parliament? Could anyone who has a large social media following and cares about politics and reaching people potentially be in the position that you're in? And I'm not saying that you don't have very special skills. I see them from spending time with you, your openness, no, your I, sweetness, I don't your integrity. Think, I don't think everyone uh, can do it with the power of social media because you need to understand that what we are online, we are products. I'm a good product, you are a good product. So you need, you are selling, people like to listen to you. Yeah. So you need to have this skill first though, to be a good product. Maybe you can develop it slowly, slowly. Maybe you need to, a lot of charisma and all this stuff. So not everyone. But when you have, when you are a good product and with the exposure of social media, because social media is just a magnifying glass to everyone who, you really are. Yeah. So when you have these two combination, I think yes. I think uh, I think it's very exciting. <laughs> New politics, <laughs> there is uh, hope, hope. Because you're taking a power that. By you the way, you see the, all the time now. Uh, Trump is on TikTok. Kamala Harris is on TikTok. They are spending so much time. So we see that they even understand it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it became kind of their priority of their campaign. So we see that everyone understood the power of social media. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me the first part of my little question there was how did you do it? What? How did the process begin? From uh, oh, like you you're a, a good podcaster. You remember the question? How did I do it? Mm -hmm. um, I, I I don't think it's a, a rocket science, but you know when you are on social media and you are doing this stuff, it's like the the people are paving kind of your path. So you upload a video, people like it. And then you upload other people, people don't like another video, people don't like it and they have heart crisis. So you do more of what works. Yeah. So a lot of trial and error can actually pave you the path to be elected. You used your intelligence to observe how people were responding. Social media intelligence, not intelligence, come on. I suppose though, like that's, <laughs> you know what? Populism is perhaps the biggest political issue of our time. Like the Brexit movement was populist in uh, Europe, Podemos in Spain, Saritza in uh, Greece, uh, Trump. These are forms of populism. And I suppose what populism is being condemned, you know, this is, you know, reaching the people, caring about the people, listening to the people. It's uh, cynical um, and people kind of don't like it and condemn it and associate it with a lot of negative ideas. But when uh, someone like 
like you who is very open and optimistic and clearly, plainly, transparently populist. It shows the power of listening and directing. But, um, I, I, But is it bad thing to be a populist and like make people care about politics? Are you really populist where like millions of people care about politics because of you? It's like I think that's the most polit. Move that you can't do is like uh, I don't think it's a bad thing and like making things that people want and care. I think is is just doing what people tell you actually to do. Everybody says that the world needs to change. The left, the right, Europe, America. Everyone recog you know if you're a person that's concerned about climate change or if you're a person that's concerned about war, everyone thinks the world has to change. And then when people do something innovative and different that might bring about change, they try to strike. Angle that both it's, sides. It's normal. I think hesitation to innovation is normal. When you were doing YouTube in America before going to Cyprus, if I understand correctly, uh, what Eddie, I think it's an important point that you mentioned, guys. Okay, I'm presenting here that I'm just a stupid uh, person that doesn't understand anything. Okay, I had a bit of success background. I was a Navy SEAL in my country. Amazing. I finished Navy SEAL school. So that's one of the reasons that people trusted me as well. I did a lot of difficult challenges in my life. I didn't eat food for 30 days. I ran a half marathon barefoot on the snow. I traveled to 10 countries with no money. So I was doing a lot of things uh, for me. Also, I was doing them for content for YouTube videos, but it was really the Navy SEAL it was not it was not for content I needed to go to my the army in Cyprus and I chose the hardest part so okay all this stuff and also I'm a successful businessman because as a YouTuber with two and a half million subscribers you make uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars so okay all this and the stuff that I told you it was a combination of me getting elected people saw okay he's not completely stupid Plainly. So, that, but your audience were initially in the United States. You were doing these challenges like the... Barefoot All over Marabans, the world, but yes. Uh, but your audience were American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me, how did you first come to the attention of Elon Musk and how has the relationship with Elon Musk changed and how has it impacted your success? Okay. Play a, a topic close to my heart. I, I love Elon Musk. I, I think I, Elon Musk was kind of my education, to be honest, as a young adult and a young person. I was when I was 15, 16, I was watching his videos, and it was how I learned. He said about history is important, philosophy is important, and I was like studying all these topics because uh, for Elon Musk to say this, I, it must be important. So it was a big part. Also, when I became a YouTuber and I had uh, one million subscribers. I was like, I want to meet this guy. My job is to do stupid things on the internet. So I stayed three months outside uh, SpaceX until he agreed to give me a hug. And I was making every day a video. This is day one, day two, day three. And it was very difficult for me. I was sleeping in my sleeping bag outside SpaceX. It was, uh, everyone was rejecting me. No sign of him signing me. Every, all the guards, everyone was saying, this will not happen, give up and all this stuff. But slowly, slowly we got 500 million views in total across the platforms of my daily series of doing all this stuff. And at the end, after three months, he, some kids taught him in the World Cup to hack me and he agreed to hack me. So I went and hacked him. It was a pleasure. It was, I was delighted, happy person. <laughs> But he thought that I was weird, probably. <laughs> this, this fucking scumbag is outside waiting. What he wants is he is something. He will ask me for something. I didn't ask him for anything. I just hacked him. I took a video for my YouTube channel and left. And now, After I, I did this in Cyprus, uh, he saw uh, a, uh, the kind of the documentary that we did. He was confused probably. Oh, he's not completely stupid and <laughs> about me. And he was like, oh, that's interesting. And probably that's, uh, he liked the documentary and he reposted it on uh, his account. He got like 60 million view, uh, views on my documentary that talks about how we did this in Cyprus. And also it's very beautiful, like you see for a kid like me, that is his role model kind of, 
to be able to, for him to repost the thing. It's like, wow, wow, wow I love it. <laughs> and he reposted some other uh, of the things that I am doing about the parliament. So it's very cool. I, I never spoke again with him. I just love him, platonic love. Like we, we say, I don't need anything from him. It's just, uh, it's just cool to see. And it's like, it gives a lot of leverage also to uh, a lot more legitimation, a lot more everything. Like it helped a lot. Sort of the thing that I'm, um um, focusing on is your military service because uh, when you were a Navy SEAL in your country, is it right that you w were actually particularly um, deployed when it comes to underwater explosions and explosives, almost like Nord Stream pipeline, yes. what it, how, how to operate explosives under the water. Yes, yes, how yes. long were you doing that for? So uh, I will, uh, I need to explain you a bit about how the, so in Cyprus we have a problem. In 1974, Turkey invaded Cyprus and we, the island yeah. is divided since then. And it's been 50 years now. So that's why kind of everyone is forced to go to the military to, and the, because the island is divided. It's the last uh, country in, in the European Union, but that is still divided. Anyways, so I needed to go to, we all go to the army. So I needed to choose uh, a place in the army. So I wanted, I will do 14 months of the army. So why not to do the most difficult one? So we went a hundred people in this, specific place and we only finished 13 people so you are going to see kind of the rate of uh, how difficult this is and this is very well respected in my country this is uh, this is the elites of the elites and it's very privileged to be able to finish this army and also it teach me a lot of stuff like personally i know that i can't do anything Oh. It's like um, you get drowned, you uh, you see your limits, you, it's like eight months, hell week or five days staying awake and all this stuff is, is very interesting and you deeply understand yourself, I think, when you are in this heavy, difficult... Uh, uh, Can you tell me one experience and what you deeply understood about yourself from that experience? Uh, very interesting. Uh, I was, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if what I love to say, but I will say it. Uh, so uh, uh, they are drowning you to, uh, to, uh, to make sure that you can perform under panic. So they're dry. So a teacher of us was drowning me and I was, because we swimmed like for two hours before. So he was drowning me after I was exhausted. So I was, uh, while, while he was drowning me, my, my body, I didn't do it. My body did this to him. So I was not controlling myself. It was just, so I was like, okay, at this moment, I, I understood that a lot of the times your body, uh, you don't control your body. It's like, uh, it's very interesting. When you don't want to do something, I didn't want to do it, but my body did it because it needed air and all this stuff. So I understood that a lot of the times, and maybe it's something about free, uh, to say about free will or something, I don't know. There so, are <laughs> under stress, there are systems that kick in that are always there, but you don't know that they're there. But if you yeah, put and an you individual, cannot control them. The way that you are operating is that you're not telling people, I think that we should do this on education, or I think we should do this when it comes to ecology. You are asking people, what do you want? And I will do it as your servant. There's something about that that seems to me spiritually very powerful. Is that something you've thought about or arrived at? Well, knowing about social media, you understood that that's the right thing to do to engage the people. So it's right. like using my knowledge as, but also I think it's cool. Like how, when did you have a saying about what people do in European parliament? Never. So I think given this option, at least, and you might say it's immature is like, anyway, we're 720 people, one person to do this poll, to get, just see what people think for the public to see, like for, a, I think it's, it's helpful because I have a huge responsibility now because as I pave, let's say, the road uh, to this and it's cool and like we make politics cool, it's easily, will, if I make a big mistake, we say, ah, we taught you this is a scumbag, we taught you this is not the right way and I will close all the road for the next ones. Mm -hmm. So I th have a big responsibility to be a good uh, and do the maximum best impact I can. I don't know yet what it will be, but I'm sure I will find a way because I'm determined to understand and learn <laughs> and help this universe.